Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Um, sorry, I brought back the dreaded three minutes of silence. It just felt like we had some stragglers going on this morning. So um, welcome to the call. Thanks for being here. Um, as always, it's really good to see your guys' faces. So um, I had, I have something I want to start with um, in relation to this call. Um, we are just, I mean, so we started this call back when coronavirus first broke out in, um, in March. At that point, there were much more um, like relevant and timely things to be updating you guys with um, every week or every other week. Um, and we just don't feel like that's the case anymore. So um, we are going to transition some of the material of this call into our monthly agent meeting. Um, so typically, um, this call is, we'll have some more timely information or um, like market updates and such. Um, so we're going to like add in a section for that in the monthly agent meeting and um, just kind of wrap, wrap these in one. So um, yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you guys have any questions about that or um, yeah, feel strongly that it should be done a different way. I would love to hear your feedback. So um i believe that's all for me and i am going to turn it over to mark and let him take over morning everybody um thanks rosie for putting all these together uh yeah like she said um we certainly felt uh that this was a great thing to do several months ago uh when it just felt like information in our industry and and even at the company was changing so fast uh this was a good way to get that information out and help people feel connected um we do have a couple other ways for that to happen on an ongoing basis but uh, we always love feedback just to reiterate what rosie said if if as an agent you ever feel like there are ways that we could get information or connection to you that we're not doing uh we'd love to know because if you give us feedback it's probably going to be on something that we've thought about previously and it'd just be really good to get that affirmation so um okay so i'm gonna uh i'd love to have some discussion uh so if you're brave enough to unmute yourself in a moment uh, i'm gonna ask for feedback on a couple things Topic for today is going to be a uh, perception of downtown and downtown real estate. Um, I and I'll share a couple stories as to why I, I thought this was a relevant conversation for a brokerage call. Um, but I'm curious uh, for what experiences or conversations you guys have had. And uh, in, in the last couple months, I, uh, the, the first one that comes to mind actually goes all the way back to July. Um, I was in a conversation with a friend's dad. Uh, my friend lives, uh, Midtown. He lives, uh, kind of Meridian Hills area. Uh, his dad's from out of state. And, um, in a conversation with him, he asked where I lived and I said, downtown. I didn't give much detail other than that. I live at 19th New Jersey and it's his jaw dropped. Um, and he said like, oh my gosh, like, is it, do you feel safe down there? Like you have kids, right? Um, and I, it was like, a, it was a question I hadn't had in a while. I mean, I've lived downtown for, uh, 13 years and I feel like I used to get that question a lot more often when there was a kind of a broad perception that downtown wasn't a safe place to be. And I feel like that faded. But very clearly, what he was asking me about were protests. That he didn't say that, um, but I I asked a question of him, and I realized like, oh, that's what you're asking me about. And I, the question was surprising to me, and so I I answered as like, yeah. Matter of fact, I like that night, my family was gonna do a bike ride to downtown for an outdoor concert, and he like that was shocking to him. Uh, now, I don't think he had been in downtown Indianapolis in years. Uh, and I don't think he was planning to go. So I, I wrote it off like, eh, okay, one question. I've gotten that question a lot. 
um, a friend of mine, very close friend of mine that lives here in my neighborhood, uh, works at Visit Indy. Um, she said Visit Indy right now is getting uh, this again, it kind of blows my mind, but Visit Indy right now is getting really harsh, like mean communication from people that live in other parts of central Indiana about what particularly the core of the city is like right now. And it's mostly from people that aren't actually going to the core of the city. It's perception based. Um, uh, downtown Indy, the same thing, the, or, you know, the actual organization, Downtown Indy. Um, and then just yesterday, I uh, talked to an owner of a pretty high profile building right in the heart of downtown, who uh, I, I actually met with him years ago. <clears throat> um, he has been working on approval for um, a hotel and condo project um, in, in his building downtown. Um, but he doesn't live in downtown Indy. He used to a long time ago. He doesn't live here now. He actually lives in Illinois. Uh, and he asked me some of the same questions. And I, it's like, eventually, I probably can't be surprised by getting the question. But it has been my experience over the last couple months that there is a perception of downtown, almost as if, uh, like, if I go downtown tonight, I would expect to see uh, riot police and that there's probably going to be gunfire in downtown Indy like that. I know that sounds like a little bit dramatic, but some of the questions I've been getting now kind of on a repeated basis, that's the kind of subtext to the question. Um, and then I think what people are asking is like, do we feel safe? But then also, what does that mean for real estate? Um, before I maybe answer my own question, <laughs> what, what does that mean for real estate? How do we engage with that? Um, I'm curious, have others had similar moments? You see something on social media, somebody asks you a question. Uh, do, do you, have you had that sort of like, oh, downtown Indy is a shit show right now. Like, do you think that perception is out there? Have you encountered that in a way that surprised you? Here's where you have to be brave and unmute yourself. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's Mark. Um, yeah, I've actually had the same exact question several times um, from, from close friends that have moved out of state and um, family members and such. And, you know, I'm at 11th in Alabama. Um, I, I just don't understand where it's coming from. Where's this perception coming from? Other than those few nights that we did have some uh, demonstrations through downtown. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, somebody else had unmuted themselves, but I couldn't tell who it was. Was it Emily? Yeah, I, I thought I heard someone else getting ready to chime in. Um, so I agree. I get this question quite frequently as well. Um, friends and family. My cousin lives um, just off of 10th. Um, but I think actually what's unique for us is um, I'm actually feeling more and more like it's an indie um, problem because, and not just isolated to downtown. I mean, downtown gets criticized the most, but um, you know, obviously like my family, we live in Midtown, we're right there in Butler, Tuckington, and we have neighbors, we have family, friends, um, you name it. And they just talk about like indie as a whole um, crime rate going up and just not being a great place to live and um, it just kind of breaks your heart because it's not the case and um, yeah so I, I don't I agree I think it's an indie um, problem I think downtown gets hit harder um, because of the demonstrations that happened earlier in the year but to me it almost feels like it's it's growing wider to an Indianapolis as a whole. Yeah, this is Nick, and I just want to chime in. I mean, being new to Indy and looking at several neighborhoods for a house, um, 
like family that doesn't even live here. I mean, that was the biggest question my mom kept asking me was, are you gonna feel safe at this house if you live there? I mean, that's the biggest thing you need to decide is, <clears throat> do you feel safe here? So um, I definitely think like, I would agree, Emily, that like, I think India as a whole is kind of like getting a bad rap a little bit of like, it's not as safe of a place to live. Yeah, I think that um, St. Elmo's like article, I don't know how many of you are familiar, but we talked about this as a staff, um, that St. Elmo's is running their Devour special um, actually through tonight, if y'all wanna come. I'll actually be there tonight. Um, but they are like running the special and just got like a ton of flack from like people who, if you don't live in the city or aren't familiar, um, like kind of saying like, I can't believe you guys are trying to entice people downtown. Like it's not safe there. And yeah, I think it was just, um, yeah, for a lot of us felt like, oh my God, I like, I guess people do feel like that. Wow. What the hell? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't reference that example. I made the huge mistake of reading a lot of comments on this St. Elmo's article from, I don't know, six weeks ago. It was, I mean, it was a, quite a while ago. I think I was so angry about it. I just needed the staff of the brokerage to be angry with me. So I made someone else read the article in the comments <laughs> to commiserate. Um, Cause right. I mean, it's a, there's, a, a Facebook post, the commenting is guaranteed to have, let's just call it what it is, to have like totally uninformed, kind of idiotic, dramatic statements. That's just the reality. Um, I think I am able to write off some ignorant comments on a Facebook post from a restaurant more than I am uh, people that I personally know asking me questions that come from this perception that makes no sense to me. Like I don't, I don't have a, a basis to understand. Uh, Mark, I think you said this well, like where is that coming from? Like I, I don't understand where the perception came from. Uh, we essentially had 36 hours of demonstrations and I, I'm not trying to get in a conversation about this but I think nationally speaking um, relative to other cities our demonstrations were like calm I mean I'm, I'm not saying they were perfect uh, so then that's not what our conversation is but I like that's my perception of it so then months later getting questions built off of that perception has just struck me as very surprising each time it's happened. Um, for a, a few of you that have lived downtown for a while, uh, I'm curious if you think this is something unique. So I, I, I uh, referenced that like years ago, I got used to these questions and then I felt like they kind of faded away. Uh, I'm looking like I, I see Lance on the call, Jenny's on the call. I know both of you have lived downtown for a long time. Um, perhaps I got spoiled for uh, several years, not having these questions nearly as often as I think the perception of downtown changed. Um, but I, I'd love like, for those that have been around downtown for a while, do you think I'm right on that? Or do you think, like, nah, Mark, this has just kind of been a common thread and the demonstrations is just the most recent, uh, like, button that got pushed. Um, Jenny turned on her video and has unmuted herself. Go for it, Jenny. I do feel like it's a little different. I was talking to someone who's from Fort Wayne and they were like, you live downtown, can you tell me what it's like? They kind of knew what they had heard was likely ridiculous, but they were like, we've heard that the homeless have taken over. Like there's, the downtown is a ghost town and there's homeless everywhere. I mean, I think it's just that people love sensationalism and I almost felt like maybe we need to do some 
proactive work to set things straight. Not that you really can, but if you're affecting some, like video work downtown, like, hey, but at the same time, I mean, I went to Circle Center Mall for the first time since COVID, and I was pretty surprised that, you know, four out of 10 restaurants were down and, or five out of 10. Yeah. So anyway, it, I think it is a unique time right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Jane. I think it, I think it is unique and I, it's, you know, I went down, I don't know, last week when Mass Ave opened for regular traffic um, and just ate lunch on Mass Ave and was walking around and like, it seems totally normal and fine. I think the hardest part, and I, and, a, and we've talked about this in our team meetings before, but like media hasn't done us any favors in promoting Indianapolis and all the good that it has to offer and always has. Um, but I think people have forgotten that COVID is still very real and the 150,000 plus people that would normally be downtown Monday through Friday aren't there. So yeah, you see the homeless people and the, that population a lot more because there's not the regular sprinkling of, of everyone else. Um, but even on a Saturday evening, I mean, last weekend, it, it felt totally fine. And that's where I, yeah, the video, video of people downtown and congregating and having a great evening or even having lunch downtown on a Monday through Friday. Um, I just think those things would move mountains. Um, I just, people aren't doing it. Mm. Um, I have noticed uh, for anybody that like on social media, um, Indy Maven, Visit Indy, Downtown Indy um, have all published a variety of resources kind of along the theme of downtown's open for business. Come back downtown. It's great. It's safe. Like clearly they're all feeling the need to do campaigns uh, saying like, hey, it's like back to normal or, you know, they're all using different terminology, but I think the theme kind of runs through that. Um, Lance, did you unmute yourself for a moment? Uh, yeah, yes. Um, I've, so I've been downtown since 1997. Uh, we bought our house on at College of Fall Creek which, when it wasn't popular. Um, we've been here about 15 years, and it was rough, but, but we knew that. But I, I started real estate in 2003 and did the majority of my stuff downtown, and it was a constant battle to convince people that it was safe. Mm -hmm. And Mark, you understand that you took, you spoke to that already. Mm -hmm. So I was really excited when that mindset shifted or seemed to go to a place where everyone felt safe. Um, I think the Super Bowl a few years ago helped that. Obviously we don't have anything like that coming that can bring people downtown to really, unfortunately, until they see it for themselves, they're not gonna believe what you say. Um, Cause we battled that, like I said, in our business, selling you know, homes downtown for years and years. Um, it is, it feels different when you go downtown, but there's a pandemic. <laughs> you, you know, the restaurants aren't even open until four o'clock when they used to be open all day long and you could go up and down Mass Avenue and there would be people everywhere. They, they, there's no reason to go there now. And, and then I don't think um, I don't think we're getting a fair shake from, from maybe even local or, or national press. Um, there's always been that underlying stigma that downtown is not safe and dangerous. I mean, clearly the number of people that have come down over the years and the amount of money that they spent now to live here has, it should be more than enough evidence that, that that's not the case. Um, I think it's gonna be a slow process but I think we all have to just cheerlead it as much as we can um, to, to you know, everyone we can, that it's still a great place to be. I mean, yeah, so we had a little bit of rioting. The cities, I mean, I think the people, in, the people who don't come downtown very often aren't ever gonna come downtown anyway. They're not gonna be the people that live downtown. The people that live downtown love it and know it, 
Um, I don't want to live anywhere but downtown. I don't feel unsafe for one minute. And that's the story I tell everyone who, we, who asks. And I still, unfortunately, get the questions as well. Um, if you, you know, you see the press and cities are burning all over the country, literally, I mean, I, I just don't pay attention to that stuff because I know that that's not necessarily the truth. Now, I don't have a good solid answer as to what we can do to make it better because I thought it had gotten way better. Um, and I do feel like we've certainly slipped back, um, unfortunately, because I think that's gonna affect everyone that does business down here, whether it be real estate or otherwise. Yeah. Um, again, it's, it's about collaborating with other organizations that are trying to cheerlead it on and, and, and put our names behind it and, and go full force because that's the only thing that's gonna get people to feel safe. I, I used to work in the stock market and it, was, it had nothing to do with anything but other than how people felt. And if the stock market was good, they all felt good. They all put their money in it. If it wasn't good, they didn't feel good about it. They didn't put their money in it. And that's exactly what's going to happen to downtown. So, uh, Lance, that's really great. Um, I don't think I would have known 1997. Um, as, as far as I know, uh, you might take the prize for longest tenure in Dallas. <laughs> That's, yeah, a really great perspective. So um, a couple of things that I've been thinking about that I just wanted to share as encouragements. Um, you know, number one, just to address, uh, we do have uh, a little bit of a fair housing, um, not concern, but just to be aware of what our license law uh, allows us to say and prevents us from saying. Um, this is something that if I'm perfectly honest with everybody, for the now 12 years that I've been in real estate, this drives me crazy because here's the reality. Y'all know that for decades, realtors who live in suburban communities in central Indiana have said things about the city that are violations of license law. They like, for sure, realtors in suburban communities, and this is nothing against like all realtors in suburban communities. Um, we, we love realtors in suburban communities too. But we know that for years, people that were relocating to central Indiana would say something to their realtor about wanting to investigate living in the city. And their realtors would, uh, in extreme cases, would refuse to show them houses downtown. But I have kind of a list, I'm sure Lance does too, of hearing about these things years later. I refused showing houses downtown or just really quickly saying things like, oh my gosh, it's unsafe and the schools are terrible. You for sure don't want to live down there. Well, uh, that is 100% like violation of license law. We're, we're not allowed to steer, right? Uh, we, we cannot steer people. So the tension here is we can't do the opposite, right? We can't steer people. Our, our job uh, is not primarily to advocate for the city. We can, as human beings, advocate for the city. But what is the, uh, what is the thing that comes as a higher priority to advocating for the city? Well, it's representation of the client. So if we acknowledge that our primary job is representation of the client, um, then we say, okay, I need to do a good job of getting right information to them to help them make the right decision for them. We do as a company, I just, I checked the other day, um, year to date, 86% of our brokerages transactions have an Indianapolis address. Um, so that's, you know, that says we do a lot of business uh, in the city. We know that's true. And so I actually think by being fair and balanced uh, and providing good information about anywhere that someone wants to live, we are actually advocating for the city relative to the way our industry has typically done this. Um, I, I bet Lance has had this happen as many times as I have. 
a very common client for uh, me in the last decade has been someone that moved to Indianapolis between three and five years ago, thought they wanted to live in the city. They were convinced by their realtor to not consider the city. They moved to the suburbs, but when they became familiar with Indianapolis, essentially said, I knew I, I knew I wanted to live in the city. And now that I know Indianapolis, I do want to live in the city. So can you help me move? Like I've, I've had that narrative a number of times. Um, so I think there's just an illustration of the opportunity that we have as realtors, but yet our job isn't to advocate for the city. So those two things can feel like their intention. So just acknowledging that. Um, but I think in terms of like how we communicate on social media, um, it's great as a company if we can share our own story or perhaps uh, share materials that organizations like, I mean, again, I've seen Visit Indy, Downtown Indy and Indy Maven um, all put out stuff that I think was really well done. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but as a, as a broker, as a company, I think people listen to that. Um, and I love what Lance said. I just wanna highlight that. Did you notice that when Lance shared he talked about his own experience. Um, and sometimes I think that's the most valuable information that you can give to people. Avoid saying things <clears throat> that are uh, not provable <clears throat> or, you know, kind of diving into the realm of like, oh, you know, no nothing like that ever happens downtown or trying to rattle off statistics that you don't know by heart. Um, but I think speaking to your own personal experience, particularly if you live in the city, um, can be really valuable and it's appropriate. Um, and then I don't know how much any of you have looked at the uh, data, but I actually encourage people to look at the sheriff registry. Um, I think if there is a perception that persists in Indianapolis of a lack of safety, Everything's fine. Some open house signs are falling over, but no one was injured. So we're good. Sarah Hightower almost lost a foot, but she's fine. Um, where, at, where was I? Yeah, uh, I, so the sheriff, uh, Marion County Sheriff Department keeps a registry of, uh, actually a log of all calls. And then you can chart these out. So you can look at a, at a whole year. You may remember this from your license class. Um, a lot of real estate license educators suggest to realtors when people start to ask about safety, um, like a, a red flag should be going off in your head as a realtor. Um, and Johanna, uh, I want to read Johanna's comment here. I really appreciate that she said this. She says, looking for it. I think we also need to acknowledge that for some folks, white equals safe. Uh, the wider downtown got, the safer it was perceived. Um, I 100% agree with Johanna on this. And uh, this is one of the reasons why conversations around safety um, are a really, they, they can be pretty dangerous uh, for realtors. So I think we need to be very intentional about what we say and don't say, um, so I, I think that's a, maybe a topic for another day that's very important, but one of the things that we can do is point people to other expert resources to where you don't have to be the commentator about safety. You can say, oh yeah, I understand why that's very important to you. Actually, the Marion County Sheriff keeps a registry of uh, calls. And so they, they will categorize them into, well, how many calls in this particular area were domestic disputes and how many of them were drug related and how many of them were violent. Like you can research this and actually compare it to other areas. What is so fascinating about that is when you, every time I've looked into it, every time I've encouraged someone to look into it, what do you think happens? The perception doesn't match the reality, right? The, the perception of lack of safety uh, and, and particularly crime, um, we start to look at the data that is accessible and I think people's eyes are opened a little bit. And I, there's, there can be some alarming stuff, 
there in the data. Uh, but I also think what happens is if people are willing to look at uh, call registries in other parts of the community, they start to realize like, hmm, the police are actually called a lot everywhere. Um, and the patterns, the correlations in the city aren't necessarily what people think they will be. So I, I think that's a way to kind of divert the conversation from perception to reality is to reference the sheriff registry. That can be an overwhelming tool, but I think it's, it's worth doing. Um, and I also just think, I, again, I'd come back to, there are ways in which we can advocate for the city so long as we recognize that isn't our primary job, um, representation of our client is our primary job. And on occasion, there can be tension between those two. A um, little bit of a, a tangent here, but I think relevant. Uh, some of these questions, so I, and I forget, I think it was Jenny that referenced, uh, well, and, and Lance did too. The fact that we're in a pandemic and uh, clearly, in case you didn't know this, the food and beverage in industry is going through a, a total upside down uh, time period. And some of the latest numbers um, are that it's gonna be more than half um, of food and beverage businesses don't make it through this, uh, which as of April struck me as kind of an alarmist number. Uh, but now sitting here in September, um, I, I think it's fairly obvious that more than half of our restaurants and bars and coffee shops and cafes are going to end up closing. Uh, and, and not just temporarily, like shutting down, not, not reopening. Um, and that's, that's a huge thing. Um, and I think they're different questions, but uh, I love how Jenny and Lance both tied the perceived lack of safety <laughs> with a very notable change in retail activity. They're not the same thing, but they can actually feed each other. I think that's legit. Uh, I think downtown has a hard road ahead of it. So like, let's just be honest, in an urban context, storefronts, retail activity, walkability, um, entertainment, those things have a more direct connection to residential real estate than uh, in a rural or suburban real estate context. Like we, we know that. Um, it's, it's our job as realtors to know all the walkable corridors and what little retail spots make those great. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a hard road. Uh, coming. I think as a brokerage, this is something that maybe we'll, we'll chat about um, over the next year. Uh, but I was asked yesterday, uh, what do I think about the impact to residential real estate in Indianapolis? And I, I said three things. Uh, we'll finish with this. So number one, there's nothing in the data right now that would indicate the uh, retail, so the retail real estate market is going through a very challenging period. We know that's true, but there's nothing in the data yet that would indicate that's had a negative impact on residential real estate in the city. Not saying that can't happen or won't happen, but there's nothing in the data yet that would say that it, it is happening. Um, number two, um, yes, proximity to entertainment and work. Um, so you think about Salesforce, Eli Lilly, uh, One America, very large employers that have big, uh, large square footage office spaces downtown, uh, many of whom are not operating like they're accustomed to, um, and then all the entertainment. So yes, consumers rank proximity to work and entertainment as one of the variables that would cause them to think about where they live. However, they always rank proximity to uh, education higher. It's, it's one of the more consistent things that the National Association of Realtors produces uh, in consumer research 
is that uh, buyers, even buyers that don't have children, rank proximity and access to good public education uh, as the uh, premium variable. Not, not every buyer, but when you compile the research, that's the one that always rises to the top. And so I, I made the point in a conversation yesterday, I said, hey, yeah, I think the um, number of uh, offices that are open and have people working them downtown and the number of retail, entertainment, food and beverage type places, I think those could end up having an impact. But I think it's, it's pretty clear that the consumer cares more, more about education. And I think there's really good reason to argue that the access to good education in the city of Indianapolis is on a tremendous trajectory. And I don't mean it was bad 10 years ago. Um, I, I just mean that I think the trajectory is really great. And so, I, again, I think if we acknowledge the consumer values that higher, um, yes, there could be some challenges in job and entertainment proximity, uh, but we have reason to be encouraged about proximity to education. Um, and then the third thing I would say is that uh, hey, the day might come when we're wrong on this, but residential real estate has always had the ability uh, to just be very tough. Uh, it, it doesn't tend to be affected as much or for as long as other industries because it's, it's so central to so many people's life um, it tends to be the last thing that will affect an individual or a family's uh, decision making, right? There, in other words, people will uh, adjust their travel patterns, um, their car buying patterns, their retirement investments, um, their technology purchases or usage. Those things tend to get affected faster and for longer and, and at a deeper level not trying to make a prediction in this statement about what happens in the city because of the pandemic in the future, because nobody knows. But I think we have, in our industry, we have reason to say like, well, Indianapolis is on a good trajectory. That's still true, 100%. And residential real estate tends to mitigate negative uh, impacts and rebound quickly in comparison to other industries. So, those are some of my thoughts. Um, I, I hope they're an encouragement. Feel free to pass them along. But if, if this is a topic that you just, for whatever reason, you think it's coming up a lot in your workspace with your clients, with your potential clients, um, I, I'm always happy to talk about it if, if I can be helpful. Um, and I think we're going to be getting these questions more and more, right? Like, I don't think it's realistic to envision downtown Indy feeling as vibrant as we're accustomed to for quite a while. We're not gonna see massive conventions. We're not gonna see thriving retail locations. Uh, I think Lance made a great point even about the hours of operation. I think we're kind of gonna be in this normal for a while and what we were accustomed to may not be around for us. So I think these are gonna be questions we get. Um, so uh, if I can ever be of help in what can be challenging conversations, please let me know. Um, and, and there's plenty of other people. Uh, I, I referenced Lance and Jenny, uh, but our brokerage does have a lot of people that have been decade or multiple decade residents of downtown Indy that might be able to help you think through some of that. So thank you for joining. Um, would love further conversation on this if it's a value for you. So please always feel free to reach out. Uh, reminder that we won't have this context of conversation, at least not for a while. Uh, but we do have the other trainings and monthly agent meetings going on too. So watch out for those. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Bye, everyone.